better than what they did last time around. So let's cut across and listen in to what the management has to say. Uh, Rima, it was uh, driven by operational efficiency. And um, since you are uh, discussing modeling, let me give you a perspective going forward. Uh, for first half, I was mentioning 12 to 14 percent EBIT. And um, uh, Q3 onwards, we have given salary increment, which um, will uh, create a headwind of 170 basis points on margin. But uh, we have done a lot of work up, up ahead. We expect the range of margin for second half uh, to move up from 12 to 14, which was the case for first half, to 13 to 15 for uh, second half. Okay. So you're increasing your margin guidance for the second half of the fiscal year to 13 to 15 percent? The range, yes. Absolutely. Okay. And in Q3, there will be a salary impact of 170 basis points at the EBIT level. That's right. Oh. In Q3 and Q4, because uh, Q3 we give the salary increment. Okay, so Q3 and Q4. Uh, on the deal front, your deal wins stand at $90 million, which is higher than your past run rate. Can we assume that to be the new deal win run rate? So, I mean, um, Rima, the challenge is uh, to compare it quarter on quarter. It is a difficult one because uh, it uh, depends on whether you are able to clock some good deals. But we have been hovering clearly in the $75 million range. If you take last full year, we did $270 million. And uh, right now, uh, we are, uh, you know, gearing towards exceeding $300 million for the year. So there is an upward trajectory, but uh, please don't expect $90 million every quarter. But for the whole year, it should be $300 million. Yeah, I mean, at least the trajectory, if you look at first two quarters, we have done $164 million of um, 107, uh, $166 million of uh, TCV. So uh, that uh, will tell you that we would be well on our way to touching $300 million. Okay. On HP, um, it's been another quarter that uh, the revenues have declined. Has the pace of uh, decline at least reduced or still no clarity on that, on the HP business? But, I mean, the size, uh, weighted impact on the overall company obviously is lower because now they stand 27% of our revenue. Um, I'm not able to predict that uh, the rate of decline as a percentage of revenue has, uh, has kind of stopped or, or slowed down um, because if you look at last four and a half years, we have been declining. And I don't have any breakthrough to report. So if you extrapolate the data, it will tell you that uh, the decline is going to continue, and we cannot assume that it is going to slow down. Could you give us some clarity on the digital risk? You told us uh, Direct International has gone up by 7.9% QOQ. What's been the growth at digital risk, and whether that will continue? So the Direct International here includes uh, digital risk, uh, Rima. And uh, digital risk uh, actually is uh, growing very handsomely. Uh, it, is, uh, it is above 7.9% because we don't uh, disclose uh, specific numbers to digital risk. But their quarter on quarter growth was more than 7.9%. In other words, they lifted the overall average for uh, direct investment. Okay. And in your first um, point when you said that the company's growth rate will be better than industry, did you only mean it for direct international or do you have the confidence to say uh, for the consolidated basis the growth rate could be higher? It was, I was referring to only direct international because HP decline does put pressure on overall numbers. And obviously with weightage coming down, the impact is uh, less and less. But um, when I said we are going to go faster than the market, we are, uh, I was referring to direct international. Even the $90 million of TCV wins that I uh, mentioned is in direct international space. Yes. Uh, so the focus is on growing direct international. Okay, one final question. Uh, some of your peers have alluded to a softish second half of the fiscal year. Apart from seasonality, do you see any other factors which could affect emphasis business in particular? No, we don't see any softness in our business except uh, the seasonality of Q3 holidays. So uh, the entire industry goes through that. Other than that, we don't have any uh, weakness uh, being seen in our uh, pipeline or our wins or our revenue trends. Okay. And have you thought of anything to do with the cash in the books that stands at over $400 million? 
any direction. We are always thinking, we, uh, Rima, we are always thinking, but at this point of time, we have nothing to report. As I uh, mentioned, uh, uh, you know, you would be one of the first ones to get to know about it where and when we do something. But uh, at this point of time, nothing to report. Okay. All right, Mr. Ayer. Yeah, thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Thank, thank you. A reminder to the participants. All right, that is the word coming in from the management. By the way, while the management was in conversation with Rima, he did mention that their margin guidance for the second half of the year has been <coughs> raised to 13 to 15 percent from 12 to 14 percent. And that's the reason you've seen the stock suddenly spike up. Now the stock is up almost 10 and a half percent after very confident uh, management outlook and the fact that they have raised their margin guidance for the second half of the year. Just pull up the intraday of the stock now. It was up about 5 percent when uh, Rima started the conversation with the management and now the stock is up almost about 12.5% reacting to that raise of margin guidance. But um, let's look at another stock now. Sangi Industries is a stock on our radar. The cement